Have you guys heard of Milk Street before? If so, you might have seen this knife on their website or on one of the many Facebook ads that they've been running and they call this one the quote unquote Tojiro Chinese style cleaver. Now before we get started, please consider supporting the channel by hitting the like and subscribe button. Now quick disclaimer, I purchased this knife 100% with my own money. I have no affiliations with Milk Street whatsoever, so that way you guys know this feedback is 100% honest and of my own. And as always, this is a first impression video. We'll come back here in six months to see how this baby holds up. First, let's go ahead and clear one thing up. This is not the Tojiro 3-layer VG10 Chinese Chef Knife. When I first saw Milk Street advertising that they have a quote-unquote Tojiro Chinese Chef Knife for sale for 35 bucks, I thought I was going to get the deal of the century, right? I thought I was going to pick this up for pennies on the dollar. And my parents have always told me if something seems too good to be true, it most likely is. And in this case, when I took a closer look at the knife, lo and behold, the deal was too good to be true. Take a closer look at this knife, you'll notice that this knife is a complete different design than the Tojiro VG10 Chinese Chef knife. The blade design is completely different. You'll notice that the handle is completely different. And when you take an even closer look, you'll notice that the kanji is not even the same. And that's because this is the Toriyama and Chinese Chef Knife. Now both Tojiro and Toriyama are owned by Fuji Cutlery. But from my understanding, this is not part of the Tojiro line. This is actually part of the more budget-oriented line Toriyama. And I'm not sure if I'm pronouncing that correctly. It's, it's either Toriyama or Toriyama. So if you guys know how to pronounce it, please let me know down below. Now that we got it out of the way, let's jump straight into the specs. This knife is about 7 inches long and it has a blade height of 85 millimeters tall, which is really great for moving ingredients around from board to pan or just kind of in general moving things around. The spine is about 2 millimeters thick and it leads down to this wood handle, which they do not specify what type of wood it is. And it is a handle constructed of a two rivet half tan construction. As far as the steel and the Rockwell hardness go, I've tried looking all over the internet and I cannot find anything on this knife. I actually even tried emailing Fuji Cutlery, but they were fairly vague on what type of steel that they use on this knife. They just said it's Japanese stainless steel. So it could be molybdenum vanadium, it could be, you know, Japanese 440, it could even be VG1, but honestly, your guess is as good as mine. The one thing we do know is that this knife is actually made in Japan. Now let's go ahead and move on to the blades fit and finish. Let's go ahead and take a look to make sure the knife is nice and straight, nice and true, and that it is very straight. The blade's finish is nice and consistent, the lines are very consistent, so the finish looks good. Taking a look at the handle, the handle feels Nice and smooth and even, nice and tight, next to no gaps in there, and even the gaps in this construction, in the half tan construction, is very tight, so very little water will get into it. I will have to say the handle is very comfortable, but it is a bit on the thin side, so if you guys like a heftier handle, you guys might not like this one, but for those of you guys who have smaller hands, this might be a good choice for you. There is one slightly hard corner back here at the heel of the handle, but I mean, honestly, you're not really going to be grabbing that end of the knife anyway, so it really doesn't make much difference. If it bothers you, you can just hit it on some 400 grit and it'll be fine. I know some of you guys might also frown upon the half tang construction, especially for a cleaver style knife, which is understandable because you guys want something a little bit more full tang, but like I've talked about in the previous video, what is a Chinese chef knife? You guys can check it out right here. That Chinese chef knives are not meant for like breaking bone and doing like a lot of heavy work. It's actually more for more delicate cuts and things like that. So a half tang construction really wouldn't affect the structural integrity that much. Next, let's go ahead and take a look at the spine and choil. Just like most Chinese chef knives, the spine and choil are not rounded or crowned. So they are a little bit on the more, more sharp and rough side. If the sharp spine and choil bothers you, I actually have a video showing you how to crown your spine and round off your choil right here. You guys can check it out. It is a very simple process, so it's really easy to do. And right here, I noticed that there is a spot that's not finished really nicely. There are still some grinding, sanding marks, but it really doesn't bother me. It doesn't 
cause any discomfort more than usual. So it's just a little bit of cosmetic issue, but nothing that will affect its function <clears throat> or the comfort of it. Next, let's go ahead and talk about the grind and profile of the knife before we jump into the cut test. Now, profile-wise, this Toriyaman has more of a belly than the traditional Chinese chef knife would have, which is a very, very flat profile. So for those of you guys who are coming from a Western chef knife, or if you guys just like rock cuts, this is actually a really good compromise on design. Lastly, let's go ahead and talk about the grind of this knife. This knife has a saber grind, so it is actually fairly flat all the way through until about an inch behind the edge and then it starts tapering down. So from what I can see, it is fairly, it's not super thick behind the edge, but I am curious to see how this grind will perform because it looks fairly thick, especially for just like one inch above the cutting edge. So I'm not sure whether or not this would start wedging or anything like that. But speaking of that, the only way we can tell is to cut some stuff with it. So let's go ahead and get to the cut test. All right, so first things first, let's do a standing paper cut test to see if this knife passes it. Passes with flying color, so it's very sharp, fresh out of the box. First, let's go ahead and do a carrot cut test, which is a really good indicator on whether or not the knife will start wedging. And it does wedge a little bit in comparison to... Like it cuts fine, but it definitely can go a little bit thinner, if that makes sense. Uh, there's a lot of heft behind this this edge. Um, me personally, I probably would have bought that uh, saber grind up maybe another half an, a half an inch to an inch. That way it is a bit thinner. Um, but... I'm not the maker here, so maybe one day. <laughs> when you're doing slicing, it's sliced very nicely clean through. So it only started wedging when you're cutting through quite a bit of it so not until the ingredient is going past that one inch line I guess but if it is not past that one inch line it cuts it cuts fairly fine next thing we have is a shallot because some of you guys have recommended trying to cut through onions and stuff different ingredients and part of the reason why it wasn't really that big of a deal for me to miss the tomato test because some of you guys said that it's not really a real test that it doesn't really show sharpness blah 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 but here you go you guys ask ask and you shall receive right All right, so as you guys can see, the knife is very sharp and it performs fairly well, but it does, I'm sorry, it's storming here. So it's thundering and lightning outside. So if you guys hear any additional noises, I apologize. I can't control the weather. If I can, that will be pretty awesome. But as you guys can see, the knife performs really well. Well, until the ingredient starts getting thicker because the knife is sharp, the grind of the knife is nice for like the last half an inch. So any ingredients that's like half an inch or thicker, it will start wedging because it doesn't start tapering down to about like one inch behind the edge. So it is fairly thick 
even like half an inch behind the edge. So anything that is like a carrot, like you saw, um, since it is a little bit taller, the ingredient, that it does start wedging. Um, but anything that is low and thin, it cuts just fine. So this is the first impression of the Toriyaman Chinese Chef Knife. And I hope you guys do like it. And if you guys do like it, please hit that like button, hit that subscribe button. It will mean the world to me. It help me support all this madness. And I will see you guys next week. Bye.